The 24-year-old New Jersey sex worker Shannon Gilbert vanished on May 1, 2010, with her last known sighting occurring in the Long Island town of Oak Beach. When her family couldn't get in touch with her after a client visit in Oak Beach, they became concerned for her welfare and filed a missing persons report. In December 2011, more than a year after Shannon vanished, her bones were found in a marshy region close to Gilgo Beach as a result of the search for her. This crucial finding signaled the start of a more extensive inquiry into the infamous Gilgo Beach murders. There is still much discussion and conjecture concerning Shannon's death's circumstances. Although it was first thought that she had drowned, others have questioned the stated cause of death, which has further clouded the investigation. The enigmatic 911 calls Shannon made the night before she vanished signaled the beginning of her disappearance. The conversation's content piqued interest in the events leading up to her abduction and complicated the inquiry. Regarding whether Shannon's death was a separate occurrence or directly related to the other Gilgo Beach murders, experts and investigators cannot agree. The inquiry highlighted the risks associated with the profession of sex workers and the difficulties they encounter. The case of Shannon brought to light the challenges associated with conducting investigations involving disadvantaged people and those involved in illicit activities. Discussions about the need for better resources and support networks for members of marginalized communities were sparked by the death of the subject and its wider ramifications. Numerous films and media publications have discussed the events behind Shannon Gilbert's death. These narratives delve into the details of the Gilgo Beach murders, while also highlighting the difficulties in handling situations involving weaker parties. Discussions concerning the distribution of resources and attention in missing persons cases, particularly those affecting members of marginalized communities, have been sparked by this case. Discussions about the structural problems that affect how these instances are investigated and resolved are sparked by Shannon's narrative. The story of the Gilgo Beach murders started on December 11, 2010, when Shannon Gilbert was being sought for. Rather than finding Shannon, the police discovered something horrifying while driving on Long Island, New York's Ocean Parkway. The discovery of multiple corpses in a marshy region led to a multi-agency investigation into what seemed to be a spree of killings. Melissa Bartholomew, Maureen Brainerd Barnes, Megan Waterman, and Amber Lynn Costello were the owners of the first set of remains. The disappearances of all four young women who were active in the sex trade were documented between 2007 and 2010. Hessian sacks were frequently utilized to find the remains, suggesting that the culprit or perpetrators may have used a common method of operation. More corpses were found along Ocean Parkway as the search was extended, prompting an increased effort to explore more ground, including the region around Gilgo Beach. Finding the murderers took center stage in the local community, as a result of the findings' close proximity to a well-liked beach area. Since all of the victims were engaged in sex work, the investigation became more complicated, and law enforcement had to deal with the difficulties of investigating crimes in underprivileged communities. The findings raised concerns about the possibility that a serial killer was committing violent crimes in the area and revealed a troubling pattern of behavior. The inquiry turned into a cooperative endeavor by several law enforcement organizations, including the FBI, the New York State Police and the Suffolk County Police Department, with the goal of solving the mystery surrounding the Gilgo Beach killings and the bodies found beside Ocean Parkway. The public and the community were left feeling uneasy and mystified by the case's unsolved status. One of the most puzzling unsolved criminal cases in recent memory is the Gilgo Beach killings, with its unanswered questions and unnerving findings along Ocean Parkway. There were notable similarities among the victims of the Gilgo Beach homicides, most of which had to do with their involvement in the sex trade. Numerous of them were recognized as sex workers, and the difficulties experienced by those in this stigmatized industry were highlighted by the fact that their disappearances frequently went unreported or received no attention from law authorities. Most of the victims were young women, some of whom were also mothers. To air varied backgrounds, which included a range of socioeconomic classes, exposed a variety of personal difficulties and struggles. Because the victims' profiles were similar, detectives wondered if the offender or offenders specifically targeted members of the sex trade. This raised questions about the group's vulnerability and the difficulties they faced in reporting crimes or requesting help. The victims' bones were found along Ocean Parkway in burlap sacks, indicating some degree of organization and preparation in the disposal of the dead and maybe a signature. 
This information demonstrated a conscious attempt to hide the crimes and complicated the investigation. The fact that the victims vanished over a number of years before their remains were found suggests that the offender or culprits may have been active in the area for a considerable amount of time without being noticed. This temporal feature made the case more difficult and highlighted the necessity of a careful investigation of events over a long period of time. The victims' common risk factors raised awareness of more general societal problems, highlighting the perils faced by marginalized people and promoting more understanding and assistance for those involved in sex trade. In an effort to make linkages and find possible connections that would help solve the mystery surrounding the deaths, investigators dug into the personal histories, relationships, and activities of the victims. The similarities between the victims' stories and the media sparked talks about the difficulties sex workers experience, the stigma attached to their industry, and the need for better safety protocols and support services. Investigators recognized the difference among the victims, despite the same circumstances, taking into account each person's own identity and the deep effect their terrible deaths had on their families and communities. The similarities highlighted how challenging it is to solve crimes targeting underrepresented groups and stressed how critical it is to address structural problems in order to stop additional victimization. An architect by the name of Rex Hoyerman was not detained until July 13, 2023, on suspicion of killing the Gilgo Four. Hoyerman was not even charged for the other seven victims discovered at Gilgo Beach. Thus, it seems clear that he entered a not guilty plea. Which raises one question for us. And who was in the background? Did Hoyerman know the individual? Was he a lone copycat killer or did he have a partner? We don't know the whole story or what the video shows you, but what we do know is that the person who killed the other seven people might still be out there among us.